This Christmas story that we remember tonight is a peculiar one, to say the least. Not only is it an elaborate, magical story, this version of the story, the one that we have told for the past several centuries, is a bit of a fabrication. I don't mean that it's made up. I mean that it's the compilation of two different stories from the Bible. The Christmas story that we love and sing so many songs about is a compilation from the books of Luke and the book of Matthew. One of them offers shepherds as supporting actors. The other offers wise men as really astronomers as supporting actors. And there are some other subtle differences between the two stories, but to to create our lovely Christmas story, we smush them together. The other two books of the New Testament introduce Jesus in a very different way. In the book of Mark, we hear Jesus pronounced as the Son of God for the first time when he's baptized by John as an adult. Just after Jesus is baptized, the heavens open and God speaks directly to Jesus, calling him his son for the first time. Some people think that whole story is about Jesus being adopted as the son of God. It's a very different Christmas story. And finally, in the book of John, we hear Jesus introduced as the Messiah by John the Baptist. This is the book of the Bible that talks the most about Jesus being the way and the light and the word made flesh, but it contains nothing about his very humble birth. Now, that may have been more of a Bible lesson than you signed up for tonight. (laughs) But I wanted to unpack some of that to remind us that we've chosen to focus on this particular Christmas story and tell it this way. It's a beautiful, compelling story that's full of challenge and hope. And really, who couldn't use a little more hope right now? Moment after moment, the characters have to make a decision to let go and give up or to hold on to hope and to keep pushing forward. In every case, they choose to move forward with a profound commitment to hope. The first reading that we heard was a retelling of the Annunciation. It's the time when the angel Gabriel explains to Mary that she, a virgin, is pregnant with the Son of God. I love Unitarian Universalist commitment to science and reason, but it gets in the way of enjoying a good story sometimes. (laughs) So I'm going to invite us all to set aside your concern for science and listen to a really good story. Imagine for a moment the experience of having a dramatic spiritual experience. Many of us have had significant spiritual experiences in all sorts of different settings. That shouldn't be that big of a stretch. Now imagine with me that during that experience, being told or just coming to know deeply in your heart, that something impossibly good is about to happen to you. That's what happened to Mary. Something wildly unexpected and wonderful was headed her way, and she said, here I am. If this is meant to be, let's do this. Now, it's so much easier to shrink away from those moments of inspiration in our lives rather than living into them, rather than holding on to hope for something really new and different happening. It's easier to let go, to dismiss the moment as a fantasy or maybe too much caffeine. But Mary said, here I am. The second character that we hear about leaning into hope was Joseph personal pride and pressure would have weighed heavily on Joseph. He easily could have ditched the whole situation. This 
piece of the story gets brushed off by us too. There aren't any Christmas carols that I know of about what an understanding guy Joseph was. <laughs> but choosing to hold on to hope in the midst of family struggle, doubt, and shame, the struggle to hold on when family is a total mess is an amazing piece of the story. Joseph is a tremendous model of leaning into love and finding a new direction. The Magi, to me, are sort of the model Unitarian Universalists in the story. Using science and religion, together they went on a journey of hope that defied a pretty evil political force. These wise men, these astronomers, were familiar enough with the night sky to notice a new star. Now, if you've ever been to the desert or in the middle of nowhere and looked up, you know that the stars are innumerable. But these guys were able to notice a new one. That's pretty keen observation. Noticing the star, they looked back into their tradition and tried to remember what it meant. The tradition told them that a king was born. They weren't just hopeful about the astrology, though, or just about the journey. Remember, they promised King Herod that they would find the child and come back and tell him where the baby was. They didn't do that, though. They found the child and they decided to not tell Herod. It takes hope to resist powers of evil like that. To take a personal risk, it takes a belief that something better is possible. Maybe this child's story will be different. Maybe he would escape the crush of empire. Maybe he'd have a different life. And of, co of course, the most moving piece of hope in this story is that of parents traveling while very pregnant, a very long distance, without a place to stay. I don't have children myself, but I've been around enough to see a delicate combination of wonder and fear and tremendous hope that marks those days surrounding the birth of a child. There's perhaps no better story in our human experience to speak to us about the importance of hope when things are really scary. Now, part of what makes any story good are the details. And the Christmas story, especially if you go back and read the whole thing in Matthew and Luke, offers incredible character development and suspense. There are great details there. The details make a story good, but they can also make it feel distant from our own experience. The experience of Mary and Joseph is pretty far removed from our lives. And I'm intrigued by these wise men and shepherds, but I have no idea what their life would be like. And so we ask, how do our very different lives fit into this holiday that's all about hope? Tonight, just for a moment in the safety of this loving community, in this holy and hopeful night, I want to ask you to consider your seemingly overwhelming challenge. Who's your King Herod? What is that tender secret that you carry? What's your long and arduous journey that makes you feel like giving up? The challenge that seems insurmountable.
And what would it look like for you to follow a star across the desert? How will you trick the murderous forces of empire? What does it look like for you to lean toward an audacious hope that's really and truly against the odds? Hope is a scary and fragile thing. Hope isn't the conviction that everything will turn out okay in the end. Hope is knowing deep down that given the circumstances, we're doing what makes sense. Putting one foot in front of the other, perhaps all the way to Bethlehem. Putting one foot in front of the other, we hold a possibility for outcomes that are better than we dared dream. This Christmas, I want to invite you into that feeling of hope. And I know it's scary, but if we're willing to open our hearts to the possibility, we can make room for some really magical things to happen.